Hey, how's it going? Toasty Rose Jackson here, and today we're going to be showing you the Sega. So, basically, this is not an ordinary Sega. You can't tell by the little fan up here. This is a Sega Dreamcast, and it's basically been turned into a computer. It's basically, uh, I just hollowed out the inside. And you can see I put the whole I.O. over here, and I just turned it into a computer because I thought this would be a cool project. Um, the console was already non-working, so, you know, I didn't have to take apart anything to do this, which is pretty nice. Well, by take apart, I, I didn't mean that. I had to take a lot apart, but um, I didn't have to ruin anything, which was nice. So, And then, um, you know, I get to keep all the old parts that were or might have been working. Um, but you can see, I managed to get everything on it pretty much functional. Let me show you right around the back here. You can see, um, I could probably do a little bit better cable management, but I just kind of have like some wires sticking out there. Um, and I did put the SSD kind of just on the side for now. Uh, but I could probably manage to fit it right under the CD or DVD drive, um, or game drive, I guess, whatever you would call it. Um, you can see I had to cut out some of this. I had to cut out a lot of the inside um, just to get the motherboard to fit. That was a pretty good challenge. And then obviously I had to cut out a lot of this whole side right here. But yeah, you can see we got Windows 7 running up on it. Um, I'll put the specs in the description. This actually can run some pretty decent games. I think it can do Crisis at 1920 by 1080 at about medium. And then it can do games like TF2 at 1920 with settings maxed out. So it's pretty cool. And then, um, you know, you have your online capabilities, and then just real, well, I mean, just anything a computer can do, which is pretty nice. Um, but it's still in this conveniently small little case, and you can see we got the little LED in there. Okay, we're back now, and we're going to be doing a little bit of TF2 for the first gaming test. So you can see I have 1920 by 1080 going, and also these settings are all the way up. Uh, and by the way, my mouse is kind of, um all over the place. I'm not really using a mouse pad right now, so like right now I'm trying to turn and it's not really working. So if you see me acting like this. But you get the basic idea. I mean obviously the video quality is not the best idea because I'm recording from a camera to the TV, but it's mainly just to show you that um, it actually is pretty smooth, um, especially for 1920 by 1080 and definitely really clear colors. I I'd definitely say it runs a little better, ah, a little better than a uh, original Sega. Looks like I'm having some internet lag right now, with a little bit of game lag, but nothing too bad. So now let's do a little bit more game intense test. And now we have a little bit of Crisis gameplay, so we are playing Crisis 1, and we're at 720 by 1080 Yeah, my mouse is being too stupid, so now I'm going to show you. But yeah, we're at 720 by 1080 and the settings are on medium. Um, you can see it's not too bad, a little bit of lag here and there. I'm um, sure if I get in like some action stuff like that, it'll get pretty bad, but still good that it can run it. And uh, the actual system is completely silent. Uh, there's the only fan on it is a CPU fan, which doesn't seem to make any noise. Even though I've had this game up for about half an hour and it hasn't gotten any louder, and I can't. I well, by louder I mean I can't hear it. So that's pretty cool. And I'll let you guys get one last look at it before we go, and like I said, feel free to ask any questions and comment about it, and thanks for watching.